voz original de Albert Wesker do Resident Evil 1 de 1996, contando vários babados aqui pra gente no Resident Evil Database. Olá pessoal, estamos começando mais um vídeo aqui no Resident Evil Database. Eu sou a Monique Alves e hoje temos mais uma entrevista aqui no canal. E dessa vez eu pude entrevistar o Pablo Kuntz, ou Kuntz, eu nunca sei como falar corretamente. Acredito que seja Kuntz, tá? Então a gente vai falar com o Pablo Kuntz, que é a voz original de Albert Wesker do Resident Evil 1 de 1996. Ele contou várias coisas bem legais nessa entrevista revista e eu espero de verdade que vocês gostem porque é o tipo de conteúdo que eu gosto de trazer para o canal porque eu gosto de produzir e eu espero que vocês gostem tanto quanto eu é o tipo de conteúdo que eu amo fazer então eu espero de verdade que quem gosta goste bastante mas antes da gente começar a entrevista aqui com o Pablo, eu peço para que você já se inscreva no canal se você não for inscrito. Deixe o seu like, por favor, porque ajuda bastante a engajar o vídeo e assim o YouTube recomenda para mais pessoas. E se você gosta do trabalho que eu faço aqui no Resident Evil Database, considere se tornar membro do canal a partir de R$ 2,99 por mês. Tem um botãozinho aqui embaixo, Seja Membro. Você clica nele para você poder ver os benefícios. E se no seu celular não tiver esse botãozinho Seja Membro, tem um botãozinho também na descrição. E aí você consegue acessar para ver os benefícios e poder apoiar a continuidade do meu trabalho, tanto aqui no YouTube quanto também no nosso site, que é o residentivodatabase.com e nas redes sociais. Pablo, é uma honra poder falar com você. Conta pra gente um pouquinho mais de você e do que você vem fazendo hoje em dia. Hey, hi everyone, Pablo here. Uh, OG, Albert Wesker, as some people call me, the original voice of Albert Wesker from Resident Evil 1. And I am very pleased to be with you today. I'm originally from Rosemary, Quebec, uh, Canada. I grew up uh, in Quebec uh, with... Uh, you know, with my sister and my parents and my mother, if you're interested, is from Chile. Uh, that's hence my name, Pablo. And uh, my father is from Western Canada, from a province called Saskatchewan. Okay. So went to university in Ontario, University of Western Ontario when I was 19, graduated uh, when I was 22, and then moved to Japan when I was uh, 22. Uh, in a nutshell, I was there to teach English originally but I quit that after about six months or so. And I began doing uh, some modeling work and acting work. And, and, uh, and about a year after I got, I got uh, hired as, uh, as Albert Wesker, but we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, I did that for a number of years, the voice, the sort of freelance modeling and acting thing. Uh, then went back to uh, Canada where I studied uh, website design and technology and building for the web and in 1998 and 99 i went i moved back to japan and i began march 4th international which is about building websites and helping japanese companies uh, build websites to help them become more international because japan's very japan is just japan it just it deals with of course they're an international they have international business but the web, I thought, would be a great idea for them to, you know, introduce themselves as companies and put on a good face internationally with good English and good design. And so I built uh, a company there uh, doing websites for, for many companies for a number of years. Anyway, long story short, I then I got tired of always, always making websites for, uh, for clients and decided to build our own project, which was Unique Japan. And Unique Japan introduces fine crafts and, uh, you know, craft uh, handmade items in Japan, whether they be chopsticks or Daruma dolls or, or kitchen knives. And that's how I started uh, Unique Japan. And anyway, long story short, as I ended up getting into antiques because there was a lot of demand. And when I first discovered Japanese swords, uh, people were were just uh, amazed by the fact that you can have an actual samurai sword. And so Unique Japan really now focuses on uh, procuring antique Japanese swords for an international audience. And these are real Japanese swords, right? From the Edo period. So they're, they're what, 400 years old, 600 years old. 
sometimes eight or 900 years old. So very exciting. So I'm the founder of Unique Japan and that's really my main business now. But so I'm not really doing voiceover work uh, so much, but on my YouTube channel, um, I am doing, you know, some, some fun things with my son, especially, uh, Lex Arnold. And, uh, you can catch me there and you can see some of the, the work that I'm doing and, and, you know, I might be doing more and more voiceover as we, uh, as we go forward. Eu sei que faz bastante tempo, mas você lembra como que você acabou se tornando o dublador, a voz do Wesker no primeiro Resident Evil de 1996? Uh, I don't remember exactly how, but I believe I had an audition tape and and I think the production company that was hired to find the voices for the for the project heard my voice and thought I could be the right person for that role. I believe that Sergio Alarcon, a very good friend of mine, or Sergio Jones, as he's sometimes seen online, uh, was the person that may have introduced me to that production company, and that's how I got the role. I'm not, I just don't remember, it's, but it's over 25 years. But I believe it was a combination of just having the right contacts at the right time, and perhaps the right voice for what they were, what they were looking for. But that's that's in a in a nutshell how I got the the role. I was only 24 years old, by the way, at the time. I'm now 50 years old. Você se lembra de quando você gravou as falas e como é que foi? I do remember recording some of the sentences. It was in a, a relatively small studio, only one microphone, and most of the time it was either just me or maybe there was another person in next to me while we were recording. But it wasn't like those traditional setups where you sometimes see the actors standing and their, you know, their arms are going and they're acting the role with the other actors next to them, with each with their own microphone. That really wasn't what happened uh, with, uh, you know, with Resident Evil. I was sitting down just like this and I was, I was reading the lines like, wow, what a mansion, you know, like I was just reading the lines one by one and had no idea on the context of the game. I really didn't know where, uh, you know, I didn't see any sort of, I saw the script obviously, but I didn't see the characters and, you know, so much direction from, from the actual directors themselves. So uh, I just really read the sentences and, and knew I had to be somewhat evil. Um, and I tried to put a little bit of a, of a smile on, the, on my face, a little bit like, 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 like a snicker, we would say in English, like a snicker. So it's like, so, you know, like, Barry's such a fool. And I'm like kind of smiling a little bit while I'm saying it. Barry's such a fool. He'll be under the control of Umbrella forever. You know, that kind of, you know, my character is not like an evil guy, really, you know, but, you know, in, in, you know as a person, myself, my own personality. But I could get into that role of being somewhat, you know, a little bit charming in a sense, but evil at the same time. Right. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, but it was good. It was fun. I mean, I, I hadn't done a lot of voiceover work at that time uh, at all. So I was really excited about getting this job. And, you know, it paid pretty well for a relatively young guy at the time, which I was backpacking, by the way. I was working, you know, as a model and actor. But then I would leave for three months and backpack throughout Southeast Asia. And I encourage anyone who's watching this to always travel and and uh, enjoy life and experience and be curious, you know, it's very important. But it was a great fun and, uh, you know, it, what can I say? I don't, I didn't really remember, I did the job and after that it was over and, you know, you move on to the next job because you've got to survive, right, in the, in the big city. But uh, it was recorded in Tokyo and it was recorded in the summer of 1995. Uh, right? Because Resident Evil came in 1996, right? So summer of 1995, it took several months, obviously, to piece the, the voices together and, and the game itself. So yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my experience. I remember watching, by the way, uh, Barry doing some of his lines, getting into his, his, you know, his role from the, from the window. I could see him, you know, in the studio and he was, oh, <laughs> oh, those, what is this? You know, like I could see him really enjoying the, the part. And that's one of the, the few actors that I remember, uh, you know, during that time recording. It, 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 
it was a small group of people and we, yeah we just enjoyed uh, just enjoyed being there you know it was it was good and a little bit different from my experiences doing a lot of tv commercials and other modeling work where there's a lot of people in the in the set you know when when you're doing voiceover it's a pretty small group and probably some of the capcom people were there almost certainly um but i don't remember having long conversations with them because you know there's they don't speak english very well and my japanese was limited at the time so um yeah anyway por um acaso você chegou a conhecer as vozes dos outros personagens também tanto antes ou durante as gravações como é que foi isso i didn't really meet them so much before as a par apart from saying hello and how are you and you know just a simple greeting when we went to the to the uh, to the recording session And like I say, I'm not sure I was actually sitting down next to them. I think most of the time I was reading my lines on my, by myself. But I do remember watching, you know, uh, you know Barry doing, and, and Barry's real name is Barry, so it's kind of interesting. But watching Barry doing his lines was, uh, was great fun. Um, and, and, you know, just you could see like that when he was getting into it, we all, we all kind of got into it. But uh, I didn't really meet them and I... Uh, and didn't really keep in contact with many of the actors at all after the job. It was really just hello, let's do the great job we can, and then see you later. Have a nice, have a nice day, kind of thing. And that was about that was about it. Um, by the way, did you, I'm not sure if you all know this, but I'm from Canada, and a lot of the actors were from Canada as well. So Barry's from Canada. Uh, I know Chris was also from uh, from Canada as well. So why they decided to have a bunch of Canadians do the voiceover, I don't know, but they did. Antes de Resident Evil, você já tinha feito dublagem ou emprestado a sua voz para outros jogos? Well, I gotta tell you, before Resident Evil, I had not done a single game uh, at all, and after Resident Evil, I have not done a single game <laughs> at all. So that was my one hit wonder uh, with Resident Evil because I, I really wasn't, you know, doing this professionally. I was really a, a young guy just trying to make ends meet and enjoying the process and just, you know, like I say, just I kind of lucked out. And um, but hey, one game, one role. If I'm going to choose one game and one role, it's got to be Albert Wesker from Resident Evil, doesn't it? It has to be. It has to be. Oh, by the way. I didn't do any other games um, after Resident Evil, but I did do a lot of voiceover work for, you know, company uh, corporate videos or English language tapes or uh, Clarion. Clarion was a is a is a car audio company. If you look it up, you'll probably see the commercial somewhere. But I did the the voice at the end. You know, where uh, Jamariquai was part of that video. By the way, he did some TV commercials with Clarion in uh, in Japan, and so. You'd see Jamiroquai and you know singing songs and in some sort of car audio situation, and at the end you hear Clarion, which is my voice. I'm the voice of Clarion. Você sabe contar para gente um pouquinho sobre as expectativas que estavam colocando no Resident Evil na época? You know, in a lot of projects, you have hopes for them, whatever they might be. I, I know from my experience with Unique Japan, you. You, you you just get started, you right? You just do something that you feel passionate about, and you you get started. You do the best work you can, and you kind of just have faith that things are going to work out. Um, yeah, sure. I'm sure Cap Capcom was hoping that they would get a, a franchise going with it, probably, um, because anything that you do do you if it, if it's a success, then you repeat, right? But. Um, You know, I, I think it was probably to a lot of people surprised just how much of a success it really was, and and uh, it was it was terrific, you know. But I think they they just wanted to do a good job and and uh, and hopefully scare some scare some people and do something unique. And if you, I, I'm I'm beginning to become more uh, familiar with Resident Evil and you know what made it so special, especially RE1. <clears throat> It's because nothing was really done like that beforehand, right? So was I given direction while I was Recording? Did it say Pablo San? Please, more like this or more like that? Not really. It, I, it was really coming from me, coming from our actors. We just did the best we could. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, direction so much for the actual project itself. 
Bom, o primeiro Resident Evil, ele tem uma fama de ser um jogo com a dublagem canastrona. E o que, que você acha disso? Você já chegou a ler alguma coisa sobre isso? Qual foi a sua reação ao ver essa opinião da galera? Well, it's a good thing you were almost a Jill sandwich. Um, yes, we've uh, I've I've talked about this in previous interviews and um, and I've thought about it and having lived in Japan, I can uh, all I can really say is that it was obvious that the script itself was written in Japanese and translated into English. So there's a lot of lines that I see in English that were, you know, like oh this can't be helped or you know which is like shogunai in Japanese, right? It means shogunai, oh, it can't be helped. So there's like clunky translations or stop it, don't open that door, like stop it. We don't say stop it. We're just like, don't open that door or, you know, just don't open that door. <laughs> But so there was a lot of just, yeah, and just if the lines were a bit more polished, it would make more, it would feel a bit more natural. But, you know, I've been playing the game recently, and I think we'll probably get to that. You know, I've never actually played the game, and just until recently, my son and I are enjoying the game. And, you know, it, it kind of matches the feeling of the game. So even though the voices are a bit amateur and people make fun of the voices and stuff, uh, the, the game was so pioneering, and I think actually the voices are kind of fun, and it matches the mood of uh, the game to some degree. So I... I'm beginning to appreciate it. I was thinking at one point, oh, I should just re-record all the, the lines and do something else. But no, I'm gonna, they're fine as they are. And uh, I might do some voice uh, changes on Resident Evil 1, uh, the remake. I might do my own little spin on them, you know, in the future for, you know, for fun. But, but I think, uh, yeah, okay, a little bit amateur, but like I say, it sort of matches the, you know, the feeling of, uh, of Resident Evil. And we shouldn't really be Too, um, too hard on it all, uh, hard on it. Um, but you know, one one thing I can say about that is that in Japan, all the TV commercials that I did and and uh, you know other sort of productions where I'm, I'm modeling, but especially these TV commercials, the general um, sort of direction from the directors and, and and so forth was to be a little bit over the top. So I'm not sure if you understand that over the top, a bit more overacting, right? So because we were foreigners in Japan, a lot of times we were hired to be like the angry foreigner in a TV commercial, right? So, so Pablo-san, when you, when you see Mr. Tanaka, please be angry face, you know, something like, <laughs> please be angry face, you know? So I'll be like, what are you doing? You know, and like really, but not like, what are you doing? It's more like, what are you doing? Like really eyes open and over the top, too much over the top, you know? Um, But that kind of overaction, so even Japanese dramas or Japanese movies, they tend to, you know, they cry and they, their eyes are big and it's kind of strange, you know, because Japanese in general don't really have a huge range of emotions in, in their mannerisms as a culture, right? Like, you know, Canadians and Americans especially, right? We, we tend to, you know, be very expressive. Italians use their arms and their hands and everything. My mother's from South America. She's, she's all over the place. But Japanese are more quiet and subdued. So when it comes to acting, they feel like they have to act, right? It feels like they, like kabuki and all that, they have to be over the top in their animation, right? So when we go and, and so when we see commercial and we act like, whoa, and we were a little bit surprised, they, they go, Pablo, mucho to over, you know, like more overacting. So, And so our eyes are bigger and we go, you know, bigger voice. And so that is one of the reasons why the voiceover work uh, for uh, the voice acting for Resident Evil had a bit of that sort of overacting feeling, right? And that sort of that, that what they what we feel the director is expecting of us. And I can see from later versions of Resident Evil that it's more calm and more cool and you know more natural and i get it and it's very good acting you know um but that that first one is totally we're all in japan we're living in japan we've got that kind of japanese uh sort of influence in the way that we've seen commercials and all that. we just couldn't help but be like that and i think that's one of the reasons why the the acting is yeah a little bit amateur but but hey i'm unapologetically saying it was amateur but we did the best we could como você 
reagiu ao resultado final e a repercussão toda em torno de você por fazer parte do jogo, mas não ter sido devidamente creditado. Even though I recorded Resident Evil 1995, I didn't even though I was living in Japan, I didn't even know about Resident Evil because I'm not really a gamer. I, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I, I really didn't play the game. So even though I was living there and Resident Evil game came out and Biohazard, the whole everything was being promoted. I remember, I remember actually seeing some billboards in Japan with Resident Evil and you know the you know helping to promote the whole the game. But I really it didn't click in that I was that my voice was being listened to and played with this game. I, I just had no idea until about four years ago. Uh, when I was doing one of my sword videos, like one of the sword videos on my YouTube channel, uh, and somebody said, it's rumored that you are the voice of Albert Wesker from Resident Evil. And I was, and I remember reading that, that, uh, that comment and thinking, Albert Wesker, like, where have I heard that <laughs> name before? And that's when it clicked to me. Oh my gosh, that's that game I did so many years ago. And that's really, honestly, when I discovered the voiceover work. So when you ask here, what, how did I react to the final result of the voiceover? It's only through these YouTube videos that I actually saw my voice and I was kind of going, oh no, <laughs> I kind of a little bit embarrassed, right? Because everybody's kind of making fun of me and, and the other actors. And I, thought, I felt kind of bad a little bit for the beginning. But then, you know, the more I discovered that how people really felt and I just sort of said, I don't care, you know, I'm just going to own it and, and go with it. Uh, I've, I've become more and more proud of the whole work and, and, and you know, it's, uh, it's fine, you know, it's fine. We should all be proud of what we do and, and if we can improve on things in the future, we, we should try to improve, you know, but uh, no regrets. Don't, it's, it's no fun to having regrets in life. So, and so, and by the way, all the voices are pretty much the same in terms of intensity and, you know, acting, mood and style. So as a consensus, as an overall feeling of that, of that game. I think it all worked together quite nicely. When I first went online and I looked on YouTube and I saw the different, um, you, know, you know, talking about Resident Evil 1 and Albert Wesker, and then I saw, you know, they had some, some videos where it was like the different actors over the years for Resident Evil and uh, for Albert Wesker. And then I see Sergio being, <laughs> being credited as doing Resident Evil 1. And I'm like, Sergio doesn't even sound like me. I mean, how can, it's supposed to be me, you know? And, uh, but then I saw how, you know, they were making fun of the voice acting. And I thought, maybe it's not such a bad thing that I'm not credited being the first voice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I didn't, it didn't really bother me. But then I, you know, subsequently I've now sort of thought, you know, I really should be credited more fairly because it's not Sergio who did that voice and people even people that are not first language English could tell that Sergio's voice is nothing like mine so I don't know why Sergio was was you know credited for that my feeling is that he he was just involved with the production he helped get some of the work and his brother Clay Clay Ennis I know he is uh, he's credited so I'm sure uh, Sergio was involved with, uh, you know, helping the, the whole process. So, um, yeah, you know, like it, it's okay that I'm, I wasn't properly credited, but from now on, I think maybe people will, and that's, and that's fine. And so, yeah, f my fans found me really, and I think maybe somebody in the production, maybe Ward Sexton said that Pablo was part of the production, not sure. Uh, but they did find me through a YouTube video, introduce, me introducing my first wakizashi, my first sword, my first Japanese sword. It was through that video. And you can see the link, you can see the, the comments there. And, and that, was a, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And, and a big surprise for me that I was found and, and discovered about, about Albert Wesker. But so happy uh, that they did. So better late Uh, better late than never, right? A Capcom chegou a te procurar de novo para fazer a voz do Wesker depois do Resident Evil 1? Ah, uh, no, not contacted whatsoever. That's why it was a big surprise to me in whatever 2017 or whatever it was or 18 that I discovered that I was uh, the voice, but not contacted whatsoever. But I would be delighted to. Uh, so if uh, anybody from Capcom is is listening to this and is thinking about putting a little promo or a, a cameo of uh, the original Albert Wesker, I'll be happy to, uh, to record for you. 
let's do it. A little bit disappointed that Albert Wesker's voice has become British after, the, after a little while. I mean, I'm living here in England now and uh, have done so since 2011. Um, so I know the British accent and I'm, I'm, I kind of wish that it stayed more true to the sort of Canadian American style. But anyway, it is what it is. Maybe we can turn it back, you know, back to the original Albert Wesker in the future. So we'll, uh, we'll see about that. Pablo, conta um pouquinho pra gente do seu histórico gamer. A gente quer seu currículo gamer. <laughs> I don't play video games, I have to be honest. I did play when I was a kid some of those early Nintendo games like Duck Hunt and baseball with my friends. And my sister was a big Legend of Zelda fan uh, when she was, uh, when we were younger. But I, I didn't play a lot of video games and I certainly don't play so many now. But my son does. He plays Roblox. Uh, and uh, Minecraft, you know, he's 12 years old, so of course he enjoys those kind of things. But, 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 if you look at our, uh, my YouTube channel and his YouTube channel, Lexonal, which I please uh, is subscribe to both our channels if you can, um, he, is, uh, he is playing Resident Evil and I'm next to him in this very same room and we're, we're going through the mansion and, we're, and he's, he's killing zombies and he's, he's really enjoying it. And for me, listening to the, uh, the voices and seeing how the game is actually played, I completely understand why this franchise has become so popular. And it's a lot of fun, you know, and kind of scary some parts, you know, like those dogs that come in at the, we were like both of us, he was like, <gasps> his face was all surprised and so was mine, you know, so it was, uh, it's a lot of fun. So I am enjoying being part of this. I'm getting deeper and deeper, as they say, in into the rabbit hole of uh, Resident Evil. And uh, so... I'm I'm not very good at playing games, but I love watching him play, and we're going to continue to play, and maybe we'll play. Well, we're starting with Jill now, and we could probably uh, you know do a, a whole walkthrough once he finishes Jill, if he ever does finish and wins. Um, we'll do uh, you know uh, Chris Redfield, you know, so we'll do that, you know the the other the other characters as well. So uh, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Looking forward. Uh, to doing it, you know? E para finalizar o nosso bate-papo, você quer deixar uma mensagem para a galera que está te assistindo aqui no Resident Evil Database? Well, like I say, I mentioned about this, uh, you know, the importance of creativity, following your heart, uh, being passionate about what you do. I'm, uh, I'm a big purveyor of that. I mean, I haven't really worked for many companies. I, I've started my own businesses, and and uh, I feel like my clients are my customers, and and they're the boss, and and I do the best I can for them and each and every day. So um, I also have a website called We Love Daruma, which is uh, sells these little Daruma dolls, which are gold dolls, right? They're like you paint an eye of the Daruma doll. And then when your wish or dream or goal comes true, you paint the other eye of that doll. So uh, I bring that up because I'm a big proponent of uh, goal uh, of goal uh, creation and uh, in goal setting and just following your dreams. So you set a goal. So everybody that's watching this, whatever your your situation is in, in life, you can always make your situation a little bit better. And so formulate some goals that you would like to achieve in the short term, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and do something small every day in order to try and make that goal happen. And don't make such huge goals at the beginning, just you know, good, solid goals that you can achieve and then you'll build momentum, you know, once you achieve your goals and you can do them again and again and again. So for me, it was, you know, traveling to Japan and then saying, oh, I didn't really like this that English teaching. So what else can I do? OK, I'll do this, this modeling and acting. OK, and then what else can I do? And, and you know, when things become when you need to refresh it up, uh, you just do so. So you, you know, take uh, take life seriously, enjoy it as much as you can formulate goals, be great to people around you, do good work, uh, be honest, tell the truth, uh, and, uh, and just, you know, we only have a, a short time on this planet and we can make a huge difference. So all I can say is, is uh, make a difference in the, even in the smallest way you can each and every day and your life will be you know, filled with, uh, filled with uh, of great, great, uh, great energy that people will want to be around you smile and and, uh, and enjoy. So I'd like to take this opportunity once again to thank Monique and for asking all these great questions. And to all you guys at Resident Evil Database, you 
keep well, keep well, uh, enjoy, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bom, é isso, galera. Espero que vocês tenham gostado desse conteúdo. Mais uma vez, se você gostou, não esquece de deixar o like, porque me ajuda muito. E a gente se vê no próximo vídeo. Beijo e tchau.